other news now here at the top, and there is so much to get into. But why we are on the subject, while we are on the subject of tracks and lip syncing, this was an interesting development over the weekend. And I, I am shocked by this, I got to tell you. Because uh, there is a guy, and I have no idea who this guy is personally at all. But he tries to call this show a lot, and he's gotten through a couple times. And he he basically trolls Paul Stanley online and goes by the name of Sink and Stanley, tying in with the allegation that Paul Stanley lip syncs. Amazingly, amazingly, somehow, and I don't even know how this happened, Kiss's manager, Doc McGee, went on this guy's YouTube channel his YouTube show and address this with him. Now, look, I like Doc and I've known Doc a long, long time. Not well, but I've known him a long time. And uh, I'm amazed at the, like, he does interviews <laughs> and he says some stuff that I, I don't know how that plays with the band he manages. Like, the mere fact that he went on, <laughs> this guy <laughs> who just can completely trolls one of his his biggest client in Paul Stanley and gave this guy an interview is amazing to me. And knowing what I know about Paul Stanley, I can't imagine that Paul would be happy that Doc went and talked to this guy on the record. I mean... Doc is a guy that's a pr pretty much a straight shooter, which I always appreciate. But I was I was shocked when I saw this. You know, I heard from others that Doc does a Q and A on the Kiss Cruise, and he just, you know, some fans were really taken aback by it because he said something like he wished he said something with it, like he wished he killed Peter Chris at some point or something. Like, you know, I don't know. There's managers aren't usually that out there. <laughs> saying things to the fans fan base or giving certain segments of the fans of the artist fan base they represent an audience and attention but somehow and i'm reading this from loudwire it's also been picked up by ultimate classic rock that uh so listen to this i'm reading this one i'll read this one from loud loudwire written by joe devita and this was published today. The, the article says, KISS manager Doc McGee has addressed allegations that Paul Stanley has been lip-syncing, reassuring fans that the star child is indeed singing at the band's concert, albeit over backing tracks that are in place to, quote, enhance the overall concert experience. Doc goes, Doc says, quote, he sings every track. So he sings to it. So he's not lip syncing. He fully sings. It's enhanced. Mc, uh, Doc McGee begins when being asked by YouTube channel Sink and Stanley when Paul is going to admit he lip syncs. Doc goes on to say, it's just part of the process to make sure that everybody hears the songs the way they should be sung to begin with. Nobody wants to hear people do stuff that's not real. That's not what they came to hear, McGee continues. When pressed to confirm that Stanley is singing along to backing tracks, the manager reveals he'll sing to tracks. It's all part of the process because everybody wants to hear everybody sing. He sings. But he fully sings to every song. This is just like word salad. This is unbelievable. Two, two aspects of this are unbelievable. The fact that Kiss's manager did an interview with a guy who trolls his biggest client and uses the name Sink and Stanley. That in and of itself is incredible to me. But, you know, Doc seems to just, he'll go talk to anyone. I don't know if the band likes that, but it's fascinating. But the other thing about this is Doc just admitted by saying he's not lip syncing that he is. 
he whether he realizes it or not, he just confirmed that Paul Stanley is indeed using a track. Now, unless anyone has lived under a rock and is in total denial for the last few years, we all knew that anyway. There's a million examples of it on YouTube. There's a million times he's not near the mic. The, the, the tracks are actually on YouTube. The actual raw audio that the cues are on is on YouTube. But here is the manager essentially confirming it to a guy who has spent his life the last couple of years trolling Paul. Look. I say my piece, but I don't, I, I have no vent. Like, I don't, <laughs> I don't have, like, I, it's, it's so funny because I get painted so many times by some certain artists or people that don't like me as this enemy or this problem. People have no idea if I wanted to be a quote unquote problem, the people I could have had on, the people I could have given airwaves to over the years that wanted to say shit about people. I don't do that. I don't look for drama. I don't look for confrontation. I say my piece. I say how I feel. I give people the chance to do that and I move on. I don't spend my life pounding on one person. But the fact that he did, that he gave him an interview. <laughs> I mean, I can't for the life of me imagine what happens today when Paul Stanley at, well, okay, he's a, even he lives in LA, so it's, you know, it's, it's at past noon. I'm sure he's up and probably rode his bike for 10 miles already. But I can't imagine when he wakes up, sees that his manager, unless he told him to do it, went on a guy's YouTube channel. And basically admitted there is a track. He sings to a track. What's crazy is Doc is saying he doesn't lip sync, but he admits he sings to a track. Well, what it, then therein comes another thing. Then what is your definition of lip syncing? So if your definition to lip syncing is that the microphone is not even on and it's all a track and you're just, you're, it's a hundred percent, then yeah. I guess this wouldn't necessarily be considered to be lip syncing. But my definition to lip syncing is anytime what's not coming out of your mouth and going into the microphone is what is what's being heard. Whatever percentage that is. You know, if you're not, it's pretty simple. You either turn a mic on and you sing and that's what people hear or there's something else going on. Like I just talked about with Tom Kiefer. I saw him the other day. The guy spent his life trying to get his voice back. I can tell you 100% of what came out of Tom's mouth was what went through the PA, and that was it. Nothing else. There are very few people. I don't care if you're talking about 50s artists, current artists, 80s artists. Even with the lip-syncing allegations or claims, there's hardly any of them that are out there where their mic isn't even on. The way it's done is it's a track and it runs under you and the sound guy rides the track based on how much help you need. So as Doc says in this interview, he's singing to a track. To me, that's lip syncing. Because you might be getting 10% of the guy's actual voice. 50%, 30%, no percent. The guy working the fader at the soundboard is going to determine based on if that guy has any ability to, at all to sing that night, how much vocals they're going to be. And here's the other thing. Of course, the mics have to be on because in between songs, the person speaking to the audience, hello, Cleveland, what's going on? The person has to be able to say over like a bridge or something or or whatever to make it, you know, hey, let's go Detroit. Let's hear you. You know, all that. Yeah, the mic, of course, is on. But when that supporting track is coming, which is the real vocal, you bet you got to pretend you're singing to it or sing over it. That's what we're talking about with lip syncing in the modern era. There are very few artists. I know there's a, I, somebody told me, I think it was Frankie Valley or something, is actually not, his mic isn't even on. <laughs> the guy
guy's like a hundred or whatever. People go and 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 it's just you know, it's it's one hundred percent lip sync. Now that being said, between songs, they gotta turn his mic on so he can talk to the crowd. You would think. So th this is an amazing thing. Th th this amazes me on two fronts. It amazes me that the manager of a major band would would do this and good on this guy. Again, I don't know this guy at all personally.